Hey guys, this is Adam, and um, I'm going to walk you through the process for creating a uh, 3D Dino Dog. Um, so I'm going to a bit of software that I use on a daily basis. This is ZBrush, and um, it's basically a digital sculpting tool. Um, so you can uh, sculpt over any sort of geometric shape you make here. Um, so I've got a couple of examples. This is a this is a Carnage model that I did a while ago, um, just a little personal project. Um, so this can be manipulated and pulled and pushed and any kind of thing you want to do to it. So we can, can I've got two little, I've got two different meshes here, but uh, let's take the red one. So we can you know, reshape it and do what we want. Um, I've got, a, so you can do some sort of character busts. So this is a, this is a Zangief model, quick little fun little sculpt. Um, and you can texture and you can do some basic stuff. Um, but today we're going to do a dino dog and I'm going to start with something very simple which is this sphere right here. Um, so the first thing I want to do is get some reference in here. So um, I am going to bring in uh, one of our dogs. So uh, let's go to dino dog. So we're going to take a standard Max, and I have a couple of options to bring him, him in to the scene. Um, I am going to bring him in with this tool called Spotlight, which I'll be honest, I don't actually use a huge amount, but if I just want a little reference on the side, it is very useful. So I'm just going to pop him there, and then I'm going to turn this Spotlight tool off. Uh, let's just go here and pull that projection off. So we'll leave that there. And then later on, we'll line up a reference um, for our a dino dog just to make sure we get all the proportions right. So I've got my sphere. I'm going to turn that into a poly mesh 3D. And let's just check if we can sculpt on it. Yes, we can. And one of the first things I'm going to want to do is turn symmetry on. So if I hit the X tool, you'll see I've now got two red dots. Um, so for those of you who do know and think about the 3D uh, art, you know, VFX 3D art world, this might be a little boring, but hopefully for everyone else this will be interesting. So now I can sculpt onto my sphere as if I'm working with a with a clay, an actual ball of clay. And I can make this more or less detailed, whatever I want. So um, we're going to turn the floor on just so I can see where I am. And we're going to start to build this guy. So first up, let's do where we think the neck will be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mask off the base. I'm going to make it quite wide. And we'll go over to masking and inverse. And then I'm going to take what's called the transpose tool. And I'm going to pull that down. I might actually flatten it as well. So we're just going to be roughly pulling this shape around quite a bit just to start with. Um, equally, I think I'm probably going to try to um, flatten the top a little bit so I can smooth this down, but we've made a rough neck shape. Um, let's do the same with the top. So I'll mask off the top and inverse that. And then let's take transpose again. And this time we will, do what I am going to do, I'm just going to move my pivot for this. And we'll take it up and we'll flatten it off. So we're just going to very roughly start fleshing this out. Cool. Now, as you can see here, if I zoom in, I've got really stretched shape. So I'm going to do this little tool called Dynamesh. Hit Dynamesh. Now, if we look at our wireframe, you can see it's remesh the whole thing. Um, so it just allows me to, um, it allows me to, um, you know, give myself more shape to play with, more resolution to play with. Um, what I'm doing now is just smoothing it off. Uh, what we should also do while I'm working on this is record a time lapse as well. So let's get that going. So I'm going to record the documents and we're going to say, let's just turn this off as well. <laughs> so I should have set this up at the beginning. Um, and let's say that's all good. So we're going to say time lapse. There we go. Right. That is all recording, which is very good. OK, here we go. So we've got our time that's recording, and now we're going to start fleshing this out. Let's first of all work out where the front of this is. Here we go. So we're going to say this is the front. So I'm probably going to start with uh, a tool here called Clay Buildup. 
and we're going to start just very crudely plotting the rough shape of this guy. So I'm going to start plotting roughly where I feel his his chin is, which I think is here. So I'm hoping this will take an hour. <laughs> it's normally with some of these things, uh, you know, an hour is sufficient. But in this case, I'm trying to match a very um, stylized design um, with quite strong curves that I really want to match to get our design through. Um, and that actually can be quite challenging. If I'm going to be doing something that I'm just making up out of my head, obviously, you know, we're not matching to anything, it's, uh, it can be a lot quicker. Um, but if I'm matching to something that obviously we need to recognize, then, you know, this, uh, this could be a little more challenging. But let's see how long it takes. I can always speed up the bits that uh, get boring. Hopefully none of it's boring. <laughs> so um, here we go. I'm just going to create this jawline uh, for our guy, because our dino dogs have pretty strong jaws. Um, so we're trying to mimic the shape I've got in the illustration. And, and I will try to line up to it, but at some point later on we're just going to try and flesh out the shape a bit more first. Okay. Right, getting that smoothing, smoothing out a lot. Right, what we're going to do now is we're going to take this top section and we're going to do another little extension because I feel he's a bit too short. So we'll just bring this up a little bit. There we go, clear. And we'll run another quick dyno mesh because we've stretched the mesh again. And I'm going to smooth that out. And then we'll start to try and plot in where. Um, where we think this uh, you know, head's going to go. Now, it's obviously one of the first challenges we're going to face is that we're realizing this in a three-dimensional space and it is, of course, a very two-dimensional illustration. So that is definitely going to present a challenge at some point and I'm going to have to make some kind of a departure from the uh, 2D in order to capture this the best. Uh, so I'm just going to try and mark in roughly where I think this is going to go. Okay. Now, we know he's got an overbite, um, or an underbite even, so what I'm going to start with as well is I'm going to try to start reducing this sort of top half section so that oh, it, it leaves him with a big bottom, bottom jaw. So let's go over to mask again. I'm going to blur this mask and inverse it. Actually, I might, sorry, I might just sharpen it up just by the jaw itself. And then let's, again, this is all going to be neatened up later. So we're going to bring that in a bit there. We're going to bring it in a little bit at the front too. Just push it back a bit. There we go. Cool. All right, I'm going to go back to this tool called Dam Standard. Now, um, what we're starting to get here is um, I'm starting to get where you can see my polygons are stretching quite a bit and that means my resolution, so the amount of polygons I have here is not really enough. Um, so as we go, I'm probably going to have to divide the mesh to make the mesh higher resolution to give me more, um, more geometry to play with. Um, so we will do that shortly. And start trying to give him a bit of a lip. Again, this is the sort of stuff you definitely won't get in the 2D illustration, but I want to give him a little bit of character. Um, and then I'm also going to just very carefully try to plot out a little bit of one of those eyes. So I think this is a good example of where I suspect we're going to slowly leave some of the um, some of the illustration behind. So I'm going to use the mask lasso option to just again mask off some of the bottom just, just so I don't affect it and I'm going to start trying to push some of this in. I want to keep a little bit of an angle on that so it's getting it's making more of a snout. I don't, but I don't want to make this jaw like ridiculous so I'm already, I've already got quite a big jaw there now um, but I'm just wary that um, once you tilt this sideways, I just want a little bit of that shape in it. I've lost a little bit of the flat top in the process of doing this. 
So this this process, this this particular face, this is going to get like a little messy because we're basically just going to start pulling and pushing and it it I mean the closest comparison is like you know sculpting with a piece of clay and and water and constantly you know adding clay and knocking your mesh back and then um, and then sort of rubbing you know rubbing it out and, and doing it all over again just sort of building up the surface so that is really what we're doing right now we're just constantly refining and trying to shape this and build it into something that's closer to to what we want um, right I think this is a good point for me to try subdividing so I'm going to divide and you'll see a lot of this will smooth out when I do that so as I hit divide you can see it just what it did was it doubled the amount of um, each of those little squares I've been using language without explaining it each of these little squares is called a polygon so if I go back this is where we were before and I subdivide and the mesh gets twice the detail and I can keep dividing and make it as complicated or as um, simple as I want but the benefit of of going more complex is that I get more um, mesh to play with. All right, Let, I'm going to I'm going to put a landmark in now. I'm going to go and put in a sphere. So I'm going to say insert basic mesh sphere, and let's just uh, try putting this here. This is basically going to represent the eyeball. Uh, it may be too big, too small. We can change that later. Um, but I'm just going to roughly put that in place. We'll say it's there, and then what that does is I can split that off, split to split unmasked parts, and then I know where that is. So now I can, what I can start to do is shape my uh, bottom and top eyelids around that. Now I've made these sort of huge eye bags, which which I don't want, but I needed a, a starting point. So now I can start to actually make the sort of eye socket shape. And I'm going to want to give him these big brows because that's kind of that's the angle of the illustration where he's got these sort of evil -y. I don't want to say evil. He's just like a he's a dinosaur that knows knows what he's after. You know, <laughs> he's got sinister intent. That's what it is. Um, so there's some evil plan of brewing. Uh, as we know from this illustration, this is not a rover, so he's not a good dog. It's the bad dog. <laughs> um, right, here we go. So now also with that extra resolution, I can start to try and, you, you know, make some of this indent where the mouth is. Um, we are going to have to remesh at some point because it's getting a bit, sometimes it gets like a little lumpy, um, which we don't want. Um, but now this is actually coming together quite well. My nose has got a little bit squash now I might actually just the simplest thing here may well be actually to just rub it out and, and, and redraw it a bit wider yeah that's, that's looking a bit better okay and we'll start doing things like teeth and stuff shortly I just want to get you know the blocking of his head in there and then we can again we can also line it up to um, line it up in this view as well as opposed to just looking at that that reference there. Okay, so that's that's coming together quite well. I'm going to go and use the move brush now, which is a much more sort of more general push and pull type brush, and I'm going to just bring him around a bit. I think his uh, his neck and his body are just maybe are not quite. round enough yet. This needs to come out. That's a bit better. Make that big, that big dino dog. Uh, those broad shoulders, <laughs> long neck, that's the look. Okay, great. Uh, now I can try sculpting in his where his effectively his dimples are going to be because he's got this huge, great big um, grin. So what I want to do is, in a three-dimensional sense, that would actually be pushing a lot of this skin backwards. Now one of the 
both the benefits and the curses of ZBrush is it auto saves every 20 minutes, which I can change, but we're not working with a huge file. And you know what, if we crash, I am going to be grateful for that save. So I'm, I'm actually trying to do a lot of this with the um, default settings. Uh, I do quite a bit of uh, ZBrush training and um, you know, for people that are new to this program, they're not, if I come in and say, hey, I use this plugin and this tool and this setup, that's not going to help them. They, they really need to understand the program, um, you know, in its native setup, native state. So I try to not alter anything in the ZBrush settings when I get it, uh, if I'm demoing, that is. Um, what I will use later on in this is I've got a whole load of alpha maps, which are black and white maps, which are going to help me, black and white textures, which are going to help me get things like skin detail and stuff. So we'll try We'll try a little bit of that later, but that's just, um, that's not like an extra tool or anything, it's just certain texture detail that we'll, we'll try out. Okay, that is actually shaping up pretty nicely. That's great. Uh, right, I'm gonna run the smooth brush now. So what I'm doing is just trying to smooth out some of this surface. And then I'm also going to run another Dynamesh, but I'm gonna run it at a higher resolution so that I can keep as much of this detail that I've established. What I don't want to do is start, you know, see here, if I smooth here, it gets rid of that lovely crease, so I don't want to do that. So I am going to run the Dynamesh, and I'm going to turn it up a little bit. Let's go somewhere there. So let's see what this does. Okay, there we go, that, 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 that was actually way higher than I needed, but it's kept all the detail, and now I can, now I can smooth this out without losing my shape. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is start comparing this in a three-dimensional view to this. So I'm, I'm directly going to line it up and then we'll make some shape adjustments and then we can start doing things like adding the teeth and the collar and we can look at, um, uh, we can then start looking at some colors and stuff like that. Okay, so uh, let's go over to texture and then our image here and we're going to make that an image plane, probably a little bit smaller than it currently is. So let's say about 75% and let's load that image in. Cool. And we're going to just move him until I get him to the position I want him in. Now we've got a choice between do I want perspective or not? I think I do actually. So I'm going to move him. He's actually, it's actually not a bad lineup, I've got to say. I'm going to slap myself on the back there. That's, that's pretty good. So I want, I'm going to just try and position him. I'm, I want to get a little bit of nose. He's a little bit turned in reality. Yeah, probably about somewhere about there, I reckon. So now what we can do is we can go and load up something called the movie menu, or is it movie? And we're going to go look to the timeline here, and we're going to say show. So it gives me this bar at the top. And if I click one of these, it locks that, that angle we've got now. So now when I move, I've got to change stuff, that's fine. If I click back there, it'll snap it back to where we were. So that's great. So now what I can do is go back to my move brush and I can, oh, move, not clever. I can now move this, so to see if I can get it to line up more to the, the profile. The only issue I have with that is that as I do it, I often I sort of wipe out the background a little bit. But that's fine, we'll, we'll come, we can just snap it back to that view. So I'm gonna make his jaw just a bit wider. And I think also it looked like his, the back of his neck needed to be a bit wider from what I could see. So again, we'll just snap off and snap back. There we go. Uh, that's looking good. Uh, so yes, his neck's not quite there. So again, we're going to take some of this. Oh, on. We'll sort out this sort of curled bottom bit of the neck later on. I just want to make sure it's wide enough for the purposes of our illustration. Oh. Going to smooth the back of that head while I'm here. Lovely. Okay, we'll go back again. If 
on, right, here we go. So that's looking better, this is looking better. I'm gonna pull the nose out just a bit. And then the back of the head is, is way off now, but it, the trouble is it's pulling this bit. So he's gonna have, it's quite nice because it's, we've sort of created that kind of T, this is that classic T-Rex skull shape, which is kind of what I wanted to imitate with the smaller snout and the, and the really big ridges over the eyes. So that's come about really nicely. So again, we'll snap off, snap back to our view. Almost getting there. And then the question is, now we can look at this little one on the side here and go, right, well, it looks like his, his um, it looks like I'm not quite getting the line of the jaw that I want. So I'm gonna use the damn standard brush and I'm just gonna sort of carve in what I'm, what I want as a as a as a reference point, so I kind of want the jaw to be following here, which it sort of is. So if I go back to my this view again, just so I can see what I'm doing, yeah. So we're going to try and sort of reshape that a little bit. Um, the only issue I've got now is that I think I've maybe made it too dense to work with easily. So I'm actually going to turn the Dynamesh resolution down. Remesh. There we go. That gives me a bit more to play with. Or this might be one that we say, maybe we split the difference and I just try to move it so it lines up because what I don't want to do is ruin something that is working in 3D but doesn't match the 2D. There's no point in, you know, what's it, cutting my nose off to spite my face. I don't want to, I don't want to ruin the overall thing just for the sake of, you know, making something match perfectly to the illustration. Um, but I think, I think we've done okay. So I've moved that now, move that jawline. Let's have a look, that is looking a bit better, that's nicely shaped. I'm just sort of naturally sculpting it. Let's go back to our view, see if that looks any better. <laughs> well, I'm sure the angle's working, but it looks like I've maybe, you know what, it might be a case of, um, maybe I've made it too wide or maybe the back needs to come out more. So I'm gonna just mask this off a bit and see if it's a case that I just need to bring it in and then maybe do the reverse, maybe to bring the, the back of the neck out a bit more. Um, let's da, 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 da. Masking, inverse, there we go. I'm gonna inverse that and we'll just make this a bit, a bit wider. Yeah, that might, that might do it actually. We just need some more thicker neck. Let's have a look. Bum. Bum. Yeah, there we go. I'm kinda I'm kinda getting there. That's alright. That's doing it. Let's just tweak the angle of this. Nice smooth angle, that's what we want. Okay, now also it looks like this bit of the jaw is also possibly a little too far over. So I am going to just tweak that a little bit. Um, so let's just again try to sculpt in the back of that. That's where his cheeks are pushing up. Uh, a little better. I think I might have made this uh, a bit wide, <laughs> possibly. So we'll push, we'll push this in a bit. It's going to look a bit goofy otherwise. What I might do, because I think the top half's working really nicely, is I might just again mask that off so it doesn't it doesn't affect it. Uh, here we go. Now, if you do go on, if you're interested in this sort of stuff, and you go onto YouTube and stuff, and you search for like a ZBrush tutorial, you'll get a lot of this. But you get a lot of um, you also get in a lot of time lapses, and we'll we'll, we'll post a time lapse of this as well, because sometimes it's just nice to see the process. Um, but the trouble with time lapses is that they don't really show you all the little, you know, nuances and all the little back and forth. It's just like a two minute summary of the whole thing. And um, it's, they look great, but they, you know, if you have the patience to sit through me um, warbling on for ages, you'll, you'll get to see the whole process um, and uh, hear my rambling thoughts on it as we go. 
Um, okay, cool. So we've got that done. That's definitely a lot closer to our concept. Um, you know, it's, it's worth trying to, to hit the marks of the actual original design. Um, and the other thing I want to do is just make sure this top is, you know, as flat as possible. Because that's part of our aesthetic, is that very angular look. So I'm going to try and do that where I can. Without you know ruining what we're creating in here in 3D, which is looking quite nice. And there we go. I think I think that is yeah, that's done a nice job. The other thing I can use here is there's a great tool called H Polish. So H Polish will is is a flattening brush. So that'll just flatten my top off. What I don't want to do. I've just done it. What I don't want to do is hit the hit those eyebrows. So I'm going to try and flatten the top a bit just to get it more sort of stylized. Maybe you flatten up some of the front as well, without you know affecting affecting the eyebrows I've established. Cool. And it's also a great way to get like a nice little sharp edge. I'm going to get use it here just to try and get that jaw. So we'll go back to go back to damn standard now, which is I think I think a damn standard like a kind of knife brush. There is a knife brush in. In well, it's just, I think it's called slash and ZBrush. There's a there's a knife. It's that function of cutting into your mesh like you would do with a if you were sculpting. You'd have a little scalpel or a little wooden wooden you know knife tool to carve into your clay mesh. I mean, it's that that's kind of what we're doing here. Okay, so he's a little bit lumpy, but he's basically there. I think we've got him kind of where we want to. Um, so I am quite happy with that. Uh, so I'm going to just refine it with uh, smooth, smoothing it out now. And then we'll add the teeth and then we'll refine the eyeball shape. So I'm going to switch. Uh, you'll see here I sometimes go to this menu. This is all my different brushes. And I've got tons and tons of different um, features. Uh, I'm going to bring one in that comes with a package but isn't sort of natively loaded, which is called Smooth Stronger. Yep. And that's just going to allow me to really get all these lumpy, bumpy bits out. Because I want him to be, again, a lovely sort of stylized look. I mean, I'm thinking sort of, you know, that kind of blue sky, ice age aesthetic, you know, that really lovely kind of uh, very primitive shape, you know, style. Uh, we'll see what we can do. As part of the model here, some of the symmetry hasn't fully worked on the far side, but um, we can always flip it back again later. So I think that is that is looking pretty good. Uh, let's just check that I haven't lost anything. Nope, nope, that's good. It's all looking good. Okay, maybe a bit more here. All right, so we're going to start adding the teeth next. Uh, a variety of ways I could do this. I'm probably just going to make myself a little single tooth, and then we'll go from there. So I'm going to start by just masking off a little circle. So I've just drawn a little circle there. And I'm going to go to the Subtool menu here on the, on the right-hand side and go to Extract. And I'm going to hit Extract, and I'm going to hit Accept. So it's made me a little... Uh, an extra little tool here and I'm going to say masking clear so here's my little tool my little shape and so I've got a little nugget there and I am going to take the move brush and just very quickly stretch that to make a basic little tooth so we'll make one and then hopefully that will allow us to make the lot uh, so let's just go solo for one minute. I'm just going to try and make this, uh, let's see, inflate. I'm just going to try and make this actually look like a tooth. It's actually, it's actually pretty good. <laughs> My dino dogs have sort of these love, this lovely kind of curved, soft aesthetic to a lot of their, it's not very sharp. So that's all good. So we're going to run something called uh, Remesher. It's just going to give me a nice clean mesh for this. Just going to make it a little easier to work with. 
There we go. Actually, that, that ran it way too high. Let's run that down at one V measure. There we go. Bomb. Great. Okay. So let's turn the whole thing back on. Uh, we will go snap to our view. Now, in this case, I'm probably going to refer back to this little one on the left just so I can place these. And then we'll move the um, we'll move the head in a minute. So let's just snap this. Okay, so first off we've got one around here. Let's duplicate that. This is going to be pretty crude to start with. Okay. There he is. And let's duplicate again. He's got one more. Boom. Okay. Might be they might be getting a little smaller, so I can just Go back and scale that down a little bit. Oh. And the other one. Done. Okay. Cool. And then we'll take this guy and again we'll duplicate. Move it over. Maybe just rotate it a bit. Duplicate again. And I've got to do the guy next to him. I'm going to start sticking these out a little bit so they're a bit more random. Give them a bit of character. Duplicate again. We've got one more pointing up and now the ones that point down they're the tricky ones so let's do a duplicate and I'm going to rotate all the way around and now these guys I'm going to have to sort of curve it around the lip to get this to work so I, mean, look, I could just could just do away with it all together but uh, let's see if we get it to work so what I'm going to do here is that it's, I'm thinking like a crocodile Right, <laughs> I'm thinking like a crocodile, yes. Uh, I'm going to just carve in as if it's imprinted the skin. And I'm also going to start making a little bit of an indent on the top side as well. Um, okay, and then let's... Uh, okay. Let's carve into this a bit. Uh, and then let's take that downward facing tooth. And we're going to just work on that a bit as well. So there'll be a lot of back and forth between these two little shapes to try and get this to work. And it might be that I have to push the jaw in a bit. There's a lot of different stuff we can try. Okay. Now let's turn masking off. He's sort of fitting in. We'll clean that up in a moment. Okay, cool. All right. So we've got one in there. The trouble with this is that you can, I could, I could noodle with this like for hours, easily. I mean, that's the whole point. You know, when you're doing these, people spend absolutely ages um, with their character creation. Um, because you can do, you know, it's unlimited um, in terms of, you know, the amount of resource you have, the, so, so to speak, the clay material. You know, you've got, you've got no end of this and you've got undo. At any point you can just undo and start again. Uh, all right, so this one's come out a bit too far. Okay, and I think we're going to have to go back and pull the skin in like we did with the back tooth, just a bit. What I don't want to do is ruin that lovely, like, all the lovely smooth lines we've got here, so I'm going to have to be very careful as I shape this, because I don't want to have these blobby indents, so I'm just going to have to try and distribute some of this uh, reshaping over the surface a bit. I think we've got two at the front as well. So let's do a little bit more shaping here oh wrong brush so we'll do a little build up probably have to subdivide this mesh shortly as well because i think we're going to need now you start wanting to come into detail stuff you know It'd be nice to make some proper creases here and proper volumes and we'll start making some shapes around these lower ones too OK, 
Okay. All right, so oh, there's my autosave. Still a pretty low file, so it should only take a couple of seconds. There's two of them, so we're 40 minutes in. See if we can't wrap up the sculpting prior to getting to the end of this. Uh, okay, here we go. So we've got one of these, and we're going to duplicate once more. And we're going to bring that over to the front. Oh, I have scaled that down accidentally. Oh, done it again. <laughs> Picking scale rather than rotate. So he's got a couple of these at the front. positioned it I'll use the move brush just to shape it so this is going to have to come over it's going to be a curved a little bit of a curved tooth and I think we want to increase the volume of that because it's got a bit thin so I'm going to use this inflate button and then we're going to have to push in the jaw a bit as well so let's Make sure we keep all this goodness. And again, I don't want to ruin the silhouette or anything, so it's, it's quite a fine balance here of getting this without ruining our, our character design. Uh, okay, and then let's add a little bit of an indent under this guy. Da -da, yep. And we'll do the reverse, let's just clear masking, clear, and we're going to do a bit of a build up on the front. It's nice because it gives it that sort of reptilian look as well. guessed where it was, I got it wrong. Okay, so I think we're getting to a point where we're going to need a bit more of this resolution. I really need to start making this look like these teeth are sunk in there. So I'm going to zoom in a bit and we're going to start to actually pull the mesh around the teeth so it's properly like lips curled around a tooth. Might have to move the teeth themselves in a bit as well. And then some of my teeth here aren't quite fully in place. So that one's probably okay. Just drag it anyway. That one's not. This one is definitely not. Then we'll go back to my skin again. And I think this is a great time to subdivide again. So now we're going to start needing that resolution. And start building it up over the teeth. And around the back so we've got you know this sort of gnarly dinosaur lip so if you ever look at you know a crocodile it's funny in these illustrations you know, it's always I think as a kid you draw stuff as like um, you know up down up down up down kind of sharp teeth but if you look at a crocodile their teeth do sort of slot in you know their, their jaw gets molded around the teeth development um, so does happen but what you've got to account for is this you know area where it's recessed and then on the opposite the area where the skin's been pushed out as well so you get and what you do is when you get a little bit of the sort of the reflection, the light hits that a little bit, so you get a little bit of these highlights around the lips, and it just makes it just gives him that 
really nice like reptilian look. Cool. Digging that. It's looking nice. Uh, so we've only got teeth on one side. That's fine. We can still, uh, we're still going to correct that. I'm going to work on the eye for a little bit and then we'll do some textures and then I think we'll be able to wrap this guy up. So I'm going to use the damn standard to start getting some of these sort of edges of the eye. In particular, I want to get this this big crease that he has. Uh, so I'm just trying to work that in, knock it back, you know, soften it. I don't want it to be like too pronounced, um, but at the same time, I do need, you know, the edge of the eyeball, the eyelid in here. And with this other, this second one, we might just try to get more of a hint of a lower part of the eye. Again, this is stuff that is, I guess, alluded to in the 2D illustration that isn't necessarily, you know, um, something you need to do in the 2D, but in the 3D, obviously, we're going to need to realize this as a, as a three-dimensional volume. So it's stuff that I've got to give this, this, the, all the implications that are in the 2D have to be in here, but also the actual, you know, anatomy and <laughs> even that's a cartoon character. Okay, I think we're getting pretty close. inflate actually. I'll just try to inflate this to get the back of his. Yeah, that's better. Push it all together. And in fact, inflate could be very good for these behind the teeth just to sort of bunch this all up. Yeah, that's working nicely. Get a real sense of a sort of cock, cock jaw. Right, uh, still want to get his nostrils in. looking good. Sometimes what I do is I put the negative effect of the, so, so by default damn standards like does it an inward mark and if you hold down the alt button you get the reverse so I get like a sharp edge uh, instead like an outward uh, thing which is quite helpful. Um, so I'm just gonna, sometimes that's like I did that on the eyelids here where I just, I just tried to get a little edge to the eyelid I think is working. I might just try and shape that, that outer brow just a bit. And what I could do with it at this point actually is more resolution here uh, because I could really do with sculpting in like his inner eyelid here. So again, we could, oh God, I've gone a bit too far there. <laughs> we could Go up another, what are we at? We're at 1.8 million polygons, which is quite a lot. Um, we do definitely have room to go up though. Um, but I don't know, maybe we don't need it. Might go away with it. I don't know how I want to do it. <laughs> 7.2, there you go. 7.2 now. Um, again, I might, I might go down, but I'm going to go up to this level just so I can get the crease that I want. And then what I would normally do, oh, ah, 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 we're spun around. Okay, what I would normally do is mask off. I'm going to mask the lower section here. All right, so it's there. I'm going to inverse, masking inverse, and I'm going to inflate that a little bit. Just a bit. And then I am going to smooth a little bit, just to get the kinks out. And then I'm going to inverse again. And I am going to bring the top down a bit because that's what it is. It's a f it's folded underneath the brow. It just gives it that little bit more realism, you know. Okay. 
Cool. Um, and then let's also get in while we can, before I forget to do it, his little uh, center brow ridge as well. Okay, great. All right, we've definitely got a, a character here. He is, he's looking pretty good. Um, all right, let's talk about getting some actual dino skin uh, next, and then we'll do a nice little render. Right, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to merge these teeth. So I'm going to say merge down, uh, merge down, and I'm going to flip on the other side so we get two sets. So, da, da, da. Okay, so we've got a one set of teeth now. I've got them all as one tool. So what I can do is I can go over to a plugin here called Subtool Master, and I can say Mirror X uh, Appenders New Subtool, and there we go, it's giving it us on the other side as well. Now I've got his, uh, and what we should really do here is, is try to give him some asymmetry, so, he, so he's not completely symmetrical. Um, so it might be that I come in and I choose to, you know, shape this tooth on the other side that we can clearly see a little bit, or, or take, you know, one of these others and give him a proper snaggle tooth, you know, something. Um, this is certainly a bit high. Uh, I might also take his lip and maybe if I turn symmetry off, just extend out one side a little bit. You know, don't want him to be absolutely symmetrical everywhere. It's uh, it's just not something that really exists in nature. Uh, okay, so let's go back here. Yeah. Now the real test of this is if I turn off the skin to see how well I lined it up. Oh, you know what? That's not too bad. That's not too bad. These are roughly in the right position. These these guys are a bit high, but it's fine. That's pretty good. And the eyeballs, the eyeballs not far off either. I would say, pretty good. Okay, um, cool. All right. So we've got our dino. Um, we now want to give him some dino skin, something suitable. Oh, we've got to do his collar as well. Uh, let's quickly do the collar. Uh, I'm going to say append uh, cylinder and we will quickly let's re put this back to the center. There we go. And oh, no, no, that's not what I want to do. Here we go. So I'm going to quickly give him some sort of collar. I'll adjust this in a bit. I'm just going to get it roughly in position. Uh, we'll go back to our view just to make sure it's going to be roughly there. Let's just scale it in a bit. Uh, roughly that is too thick, so we're going to scale it down a bit more. Something like that looks about right to me. Um, and then let's Divide that, divide that, divide that. So we've got a very rough collar. I might even angle it just a little bit. And then I'm not going to mess with this too much because it's the sort of thing I'd rather do in a like a 3D modeling program like Maya, something like that. Um, but I'm just going to quickly just try to balance the shape of it a little bit. And let's take his skin as well and just push that in a little bit. There we go, okay, so we've got ourselves a, a very, very simple color quickly, but it will definitely do the job for our, for our 3D concept. Uh, okay, so we'll go back, we'll go back. Okay, we're gonna start to add some texture to this guy. So what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna add the alphas I talked about at the beginning. So we're gonna go back to what's called the standard brush. You can see we've been doing Z add here, which just adds to the surface. I'm gonna turn that off and I'm gonna go turn RGB on. And then I'm going to go to Alpha here, and it comes with a bunch, but I'm going to import a whole load that uh, I already have. Uh, so I'm going to import some of these uh, skin maps that I've got, and we'll see what they do. So let's try, we can do drag. So with this one, if I drag this on the surface, let's make sure I'm selected on the right object. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Let's make sure it's not masked. Masking clear. Uh, RGB intensity, yes. Why is this not dragging? Uh, what is happening here? Uh, okay. 
Let's see if there's another one that wants to work. Uh, no. Try it as a spray. Oh, there we go. Alright, okay, so we've got something working. Oh, right, I know why, because these are, I'm trying to use them as, uh, not as an RGB, I want to use them as a Z intensity as well. I'm not doing the texture painting yet. Sorry, I went five steps ahead. Right, let's also, we've got a lazy mouse function on. Let's turn that off. There we go. Right, okay. So that's a bit too much. Let's see what happens if I do drag. I can start dragging out certain patterns. Um, so let's have a look to see if there's something in here that we think might work for our dyno. Uh, we've got some skin here. Eh, maybe, maybe, we'll see. Um, what else do we have? We've got, uh, oh, sorry, uh, alphas. Uh, let's see, oh, that could be interesting. And that one is extruding, so I'm gonna hit Alt and you'll get, that's pretty good. That's a good lizard skin. That's gonna be fun. Sort of an elephant, I like an elephant skin, that one. Um, what else do we have? That's cool. Oh, let's try that as, let's try that, oh, there we go. That's, the, that's on the money. Okay, so let's add a little bit of that. So I'm going to go to spray this time. Oh, there we go. Right, straight in there. Okay, so we'll turn the intensity down a little bit. And so we're basically just going to spray this on the surface. Hopefully not, I don't want to drive it too much. If we do it too much, I can always uh, smooth it out. Or I could have done this on a layer, taken it off. I'm going to do a basic coverage of the guy. I mean, honestly, I probably should have done this with the uh, draw. I've also done it symmetry, which you never do. <laughs> it's a lot of cardinal sins, but yeah, I could come in now and I could manually, I choose to enhance certain areas. I could knock this down a bit with smooth and then say, right, I want this really pronounced. You know, it's actually come out quite small, so I might, I might just do some bits where I can just manually, yeah, it's a nice big patterning. I don't want it too strong anyway, because um, it's probably, it's going to ruin the aesthetic a little bit. Okay. I might even turn the, um, I might even turn, yeah, I'm going to, I've turned the symmetry off so I can start getting some asymmetry at the front. Um, let's, I mean, drag rectangular, which is this, is one of my, favorite tools actually once you've got a nice alpha and you can just start placing it but I think it's quite good to get a base coat or something to start with and then what we can do as well is go and take something that's a little more generic uh, let's see what do we have um, so either this one or the one we tried earlier which I can go back to actually let's go back to the one I had earlier where was it See, I think the principle of that's good, but basically we, I think we might have to do it by hand. So I'm going to go to damn standards and I'm going to start to say, let's, let's, this can, this can go back to uh, symmetrical. So then I can start to actually, now this is where, again, you're, you're really good sculptors. You're really good ZBrush artists who work on all of these films that, you know, they can honestly spend absolutely hours, you know, properly like working out where these scales are and just obviously you don't want to do too much manual but there's a certain like <laughs> pleasure in doing it because it's just it's just you know creating something it's it's drawing on the computer drawing with clay that's effectively what it is um, and you can start to do gnarly gnarly things like scars and all that kind of stuff and all the fine detail you know once you've got the basic shape this is this is the fun bit you come in you can start to do all this all this stuff But this is the this is where when you're teaching or doing one of these videos, there's a danger that you just go <laughs> you go really quiet, you know, just sit here and do your own thing for a little bit, sculpt away. <laughs> just I just be it for hours. Yeah, I really enjoy it, you know. So you can start doing all the little 
detail-y bits, try and get all the creases in. Give him some proper character. There's a there's a there's a trait on a dino. There's one dino dog trait that is like this big scar here and stuff. I mean that's actually quite a nice nice thing to do, you know. Start to enhance a little bit. There's some other stuff I can do as well, which I'm gonna I'm gonna try in a second. Oh, there's our water save, right? We've hit the hour mark. Um, so I'm gonna try and do a some sort of render of this. We'll quickly put some very basic colours on and um, see where we uh, see where we get to. And then I'll probably do a little bit more work on this in the background and uh, and then we'll present the, the 3D Dino Dog on the Discord for those of you that are following along there. Um, I'll get some nice sort of creases down here. And what I can do as well, <clears throat> realistically I probably should have done some of this before putting in the patterning, but you know you can you can add a little bit of fat to that as well. But then I'd have to come in. I've got oh, this is why I should have done my um reptilian pattern on a separate layer because then I could turn it on and off. But you know, this is this is fine. Um so what I can do with this as well, right? So let's let's talk about texturing. So um uh, I'm just gonna divide the eyes. So we're gonna give this guy a skin tone and then we're gonna start doing some very so I'm gonna do this green stuff here. So first off we're gonna say solo, so I'm gonna go just to this, this uh, skin, and we will select you know, a basic green, and I am going to go to, where is it? Uh, I want skin shade, skin shade, okay. And we'll try and find a green that is vaguely representative of this one here, so it's okay, I guess it's a little more blue. That seems about right. And we will go color, Let's do color fill object. There we go. Um, and then we are going to also go down to masking and we're going to say mask by cavity. Actually, before I do any of this, let's save this before we uh, before it gets too lit. So uh, we'll say dino dog two, because I had a prepped one earlier. Um, okay, and we're going to say, here we go, masking, mask by cavity, mask by cavity. This is going to mask, yeah, here we go, this is really interesting, this is going to mask all the cavities in my model. So if I'd spent a lot of time doing that carving out, it, um, it would have um, really uh, picked out where all the scales were. All right, so I'll do a little blur on this. I'm going to turn the mask itself off, and what I'm going to do is pick a slightly darker tone. And then now I can go to my color brush, and now I can t go back to. Uh, um, let's just get like a very basic brush going. Uh, now I can go back to this RGB thing, which is what I was trying to do earlier. And I should be able. Here we go. So it's going to start spraying that darker tone into the cavity, um, which is what I want. I want to give them a little bit of texture, a little bit of context. Starts to just make it pop a little bit, you know. Give him. There we go. What I might do as well, I'm gonna do a little bit of that. But um, what I might also do is now come in and take again a, a darker shade. And um, what I might also do is just paint this more sort of. We'll turn the intensity down a bit, but and we'll turn the mask off. It's just sort of darken up, you know, like the top of the lips and stuff or the. The recess there, uh, maybe maybe around the eyes a little bit. You know, just try to give that a little bit of shading. And we'll do the same, you know, around the nose. Certainly under it. Um, and this is not like light and dark shading. This is like where the skin is going to be a bit darker. Yeah, but it gets less sunlight, I guess. And then we'll do the same. We'll pick up maybe a, like a little bit more, a little bit more yellow. And try to get. I could. I could actually mask off. Uh, mask off the top. That's why I'm doing this. And I'm just going to try and. I might change this as well. Oh no, it's on it. It's okay. It's on a. It's on a, a funky brush. So I'm just going to try and get those. Some of the top surfaces in. You can see I've forgotten to 
I haven't painted the top for the look of it. Oh, spun right around. Right, I haven't painted the top. I should have done that. It'd be nice to get some other greens in here. Let's vary it up a little bit. Probably be nice to get some pinks and other stuff as well, but for now I'm just trying to keep this pretty, pretty loose. Another one I like is this guy. This is pretty good. Let's go back to a dark. And I might go to uh, Rectangular and see. No, that's too much. Too much. Okay. Uh, yeah. Let's, let's change that up back to spray. Just trying to balance it out. I mean, again, this is another process that can can go on for quite some time if you really, you know, get into it. I mean, really quite some time. <laughs> okay, let's do another mask. Mask by Cavity again. And again, I will blur and I will inverse. And uh, I'm going to go back to a darker tone just to get these bits that I. Oh, I see what's happened here. I never actually. Um, that was stupid of me. I never, I never finished the sculpting up there, but it's fine because we're not actually, we're not actually going to see that much of that when I do the render. So that's not a big deal. But again, this is just because I, at this point in time, I'm just rushing to get the um, this concept done. So for you guys, so you can see how it's going to look. Okay. We're looking pretty good. I'm going to turn the symmetry off. One last thing I want to do on the skin before we try and rewrap this up is to give it a bit sort of a spotty surface. So the other one I'm going to do here is this guy. And let's see if I can't. I don't know if this is going to come out. We'll try the drag. I'm just going to give them a few like highlighted other tones. It might have to be something else. It might have to be an actual. Oh, that's quite nice. Oh, little sort of scars. Oh, that's quite good. Um, no, there's an actual dot in here somewhere. There it is. I'm just going to give him a couple of little blemishes on his skin. In fact, we could try that as a spray, see if it does nothing. Just some patches. The skin is, uh, yeah, skin is not uniform, it's not perfect in any way. So we'll just give him a little bit of that to break him up. I mean, actually, his, we would actually have other things like browns and stuff in here as well. You know, just to sort of vary the base skin tone. Okay, so we've got a nice, a nice sort of 3D-ish uh, uh, skin there. Let's turn Solo back on. You can see it's picked up those colors, but we're not going to give them those colors. We're going to go to the, turn the collar off and just have the teeth and the eyes. And we are going to set that to a different material. So we're going to say uh, Sketch Toy Plastic here. We will divide those teeth because they're coming up all funny like that. You can see all the all the edges because it's this is a really shiny material. So we're just going to do that and then we will go to the plugin fill uh, color and material done. Um, and then the teeth we can leave for the moment. We will go to the eyes and we'll quickly give them a red. Uh, so I can paint that on. I will go to Alpha off and just very quickly. There we go. Um, what I'll do now as well is I will pick, uh, go back to freehand, and we will also just try and turn the intensity off to get that little glow in the middle. Is that symmetry? Yes. Okay. Let's turn this back on. Donk, 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 donk. There we go. And I'm going to try and do that little. Let's see if I can't do that stripe. Oh, I need it to be black. Oh, I'm on the wrong thing. Okay. Now I need that to be really strong and clear. There 
we go. It's going there. Could be a little better, but uh, good. All right, now our skin has picked up the shiny material of the eye, so we need to change that too. I need to change this back to, uh, where is it? Uh, skin. Skin shade. There we go. So his skin is back to normal. He's got lovely shiny teeth. Uh, and uh, what else do we need? We just need to give the collar something. Could darken the teeth, but we'll see what happens. So the collar is just going to be a regular material, and we'll make it yellow, let's say there. So here we go, fill, colour and material. Um, oh, does that need a depressor? Uh, what do we need to do here? Basic material. Fill, colour material. Yeah, that's a bit better. Okay, um, let's go back to Skin shade, we'll turn everything else back on. Oh, getting there. Um, so now we're just going to work on the teeth a little bit. Last thing here, we're going to give them a little bit brown. Um, so we will do spray. And let's just do something soft. Just something very light on the edges here. I'm actually not going to do that side because I just want to, uh, at this point in time, we're just going to render it from the one side. Cool. Alrighty. Bomb. Bomb. There he is. Wicked. Very happy with that. Right, let's get some lighting in. So first things first, we'll go texture. We're going to turn that off. Uh, so uh, what we might want to do is just very quickly clear. I'm going to turn the texture off. Uh, da -da 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 -da. I want to clear the palette. Um, bum, bum, bum. Yeah, let's just do that. So, Control N. There we are. Uh, and let's go to our lighting. So, we're looking all right at the moment. Uh, we are going to change the background color to this blue as well. Uh, so, where are we? Uh, document back is going to be this blue, but I think we're going to have to actually pick it. So I'm going to just quickly try and select it in the palette here. I think it's bluer than that, isn't it? There we go. Uh, oh, this is challenging. There we go. Uh, <laughs> that, that looks about right to me. Okay, so document. Back, we're going to say blue. Yep. Yeah. Fine. Uh, let's look at the, put the lighting here. Let's turn some shadows on. So we'll say uh, shadows. Yes, we'll turn ambient occlusion on. And in the shadow pass, we're going to turn the shadow strength down a bit. And the angle will set to 15, which just softens it a little bit. Uh, okay, cool. We're going to hit this BPR render button and see what we get. That's going to take a little moment because it has to calculate what's called ambient occlusion, which is all the areas that are occluded by the shadow of the object itself. And it's going to calculate shadows and a bit of lighting. In terms of where this needs to go, I still want to sculpt on the lips quite a lot more. I still want to shape the teeth, um, a little bit of the jaw, um, and obviously do a much finer pass on the wrinkles and the, and the skull and everything. So, cool. All right, there's our dino. Um, yeah. No? Pretty happy with that guy. There he is. There's our 3D Dino. There's our first 3D Dino dog. Okay, he's going to need more work, but um, I'm glad you guys were able to uh, watch this process with me, and hopefully you'll enjoy the finished um, 3D Dino. Cool. Thanks a lot.